YouTube. What's going on guys? It's Mike here, back with another video, and it's that time of year again. We're wood chipping the entire property here. We have to cover all of the beds, which there's quite a quite a bit of beds here uh, over here at the homestead, and we need to get wood chips on all of them. So we're gonna have to use a trailer to do that, and the trailer we have is in real rough condition. So that's what this video is about today. We're refurbishing the trailer that has lived on this property for many, many, many years and has been neglected. So let's jump right into that. Okay guys, so here's the trailer. Uh, it's not in bad shape. I actually did put a couple wood chips in it and realized how bad of shape it was really in. So let me go through it. I just want to run around it and show you guys what the game plan is and, and how I'm going to bring this thing back up to speed. Um, it's, it's in pretty rough shape. So number one is it's missing its, its door panel right here. There's supposed to be a sliding door that slides into these slots, these grooves. There's one on each side and that's going to allow wood chips from falling out the back when I give the quad gas and pull it forward. So that's the first thing that we have to figure out is how we could uh, slide a piece in. And I think we might be able to find like a piece of, of wood at Home Depot. It looks like it's half an inch, um, maybe a little bit less than half an inch. So we have to find something that's a quarter inch that we can slide in there. That should stop any wood chips from falling. So that's the first step. Second step is we need some new tires. So these tires are dry rotted and they actually don't hold any air. They, um, when I fill them up, they completely just go flat after the first load sits on them. And by the time I make it back to the wood chip pile, which is located right there, they are uh, completely flat. And we just can't have that. Can't be filling the tires up at, between runs. So we're gonna replace these tires. Uh, just get new ones and I believe they sell them tire and rim. So we'll check out Home Depot and Tractor Supply and I think maybe Harbor Freight carries them. So they're all right next to each other. We'll check all of them out when we get into the store, but two of these. And what we have to do is we have to measure the tire. Now it says it right there, 16 by six and a half by eight, uh, which is what we'll go with. I'll write those in my phone and I'll try to match uh, this number in the store when we get there. So the next thing that we're going to work on repairing here is uh, we're in the front of the trailer. Obviously, this is the, the hitch point and um, this is like the dumping feature. So when I release this right here, I pull this back, it releases this frame, this V frame, and then it dumps the trailer back. Now, the issue we have is obviously this is completely detached. The screw looks like it completely rusted out um, and pulled through the bottom up here. So that's not good. What we're gonna do is we'll, we'll make it tight and we'll drill two new holes and we'll set some new hardware in there with some washers, stainless steel, so it doesn't rust. I don't know how much longer I have with this trailer, but you know, let's make it right. Let's do what we can. And I'm gonna paint this thing too. I'm thinking um, maybe I'll just give it a coat of spray paint. It looks like whatever this is, is peeling off. Um, I don't know how long it's gonna last if I do spray paint this, because it is obviously very rusty. Uh, but we'll give it a shot. We'll, we'll paint it maybe a nice blue color. Um, and that'll be it. That'll, that'll change this, this uh, the, <laughs> the whole trajectory of this poor little trailer. And it'll give me maybe a season or two more of wood chipping. So let's get to the store and buy some materials that we need to get this project going. All right, guys, so we're back from the store. We got uh, two new tires. These actually are a little bit bigger than the current ones, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem. We're gonna, we're gonna see if these fit. We have to take the old ones off. I think it's gonna fit their one inch bore, and this is a one inch bore here, so that it will fit there, but I'm worried about the height. So we'll see. Uh, we have to grind some metal. We'll grind some metal. We'll make them work. So uh, cotter pins, we needed some cotter pins for these as well because that's what holds these tires on uh, once they go through the axle. Um, in the bucket, we have a new bucket, which is nice. Home Depot stops using bags here in New Jersey, so uh, you have to get a bucket pretty much every time you go and need some small bits and pieces. But I think we're gonna go with blue. We're gonna spray paint this thing blue. 
I think that'll be a nice look. We'll do it when we take the tires off. We'll just do the best we can. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I got two cans of that. And then I have a bunch of hardware down in the bottom of this bucket. And the hardware is going to, uh, I went overboard, but I got two washers, a lock washer, nuts, machine bolts. Um, we're gonna basically reinforce this thing as much as we can with all of this hardware here. So we'll, we'll see what we can do. And then lastly, to build the gate, uh, or the, the, I guess, the, the, whatever you want to call this, the tailgate or the, the, the latch, whatever you want it. So um, I got these two pieces of metal, one there and one there. And the idea is I'm going to um, basically screw this to the wood and let the wood kind of be the barrier and have these just fit slide between there. The reason that I went with this option and and this is probably up for discussion but i didn't want to use a sheet of plywood a sheet of plywood quarter inch would fit between these two grooves and it'd be much thinner much easier but i didn't want to buy a whole new sheet of plywood for this job and i also didn't want to buy a whole new sheet of pressure treated plywood because this thing's going to live outside i'm not putting this in the shed so what i have here is just scraps from my chicken coop project of just wood just just you can see it's it's cut on angles it's it's crummy it's not the best but it's pressure treated and it's gonna hold the wood chips in it'll be a little bit taller too i think it'd be cool if i went a little bit taller just to prevent any kind of a hill from spilling over when i'm loading this with the tractor so that's um that's the idea and then i was looking at it and it does fit perfect with the 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 the, the two what are these? Maybe two by eights. I'm not even too sure what these are. These are just scraps. Yeah, two by eights. So these are two two by eights, and then I have a two by four up top. Um, and I'm thinking maybe I I spread it like that, so it's easy for me to grab this and slide it up and pull it down. That's just an idea. We'll see what we could do, but it's going to be held together with these two plates that are basically going to be offset by like an inch on each side, so that they can slide in there. A long way of saying that this is going to be our gate and it'll work just fine for our application. So anyway, uh, yeah, let's get to work. I think what I'm going to do is start with building this gate. I did just want to take a second to talk about this. This is a metal self-tapping screw. So it's not necessarily made for wood, but I think it'll work just fine in this application. But I do need it to tap through the metal and then bite into the wood. So that's why I'm using this. I didn't really want to pre-drill through the, the metal here. I think these are going to work just fine, and they certainly did.
All right, there's the final product, the finished product. It came really good. And the moment of truth, let's see if it slides right into position. And it certainly does. So that was a uh, that was a fun little little project, side project, building this gate. Next step is to work on the bottom. So what I'm going to do here is just trying to fit that hardware, find out where I'm going to put that hardware into place. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do. The screw that's here is shot. It's completely rusted out. The the nut is is kind of like molded with the screw so you know first step is to figure out where I'm gonna drill and tap the new screws and uh, washers and nuts and then figure out if I can reuse the same hole or not It starts to feel like it wants to go, and, and it really did feel like the threads were, were going to work out, and then it broke. So it just broke right in half. It worked out, though, because the hole was in good shape. I didn't really plan on reusing this old rusted hardware. I bought new stuff and plenty of new hardware just in case that happened, so it did work out. The hole was in good shape on the inside of the, the frame of the, the actual dump trailer, and the hole was, was in good shape on the the v-shaped frame that we're looking at here so i was able to just slide the new piece of uh, the new screw in uh the new bolt i mean and then put my washers and nut on and, and it, it worked out pretty good So what I have here now is a ratchet, and I'm not sure which size socket this was. I kind of just fitted it to the bolt. I found it in this big bin of sockets that I have. Not the most organized, but it fit. And what I had to do is grab the top of the, the bolt on the inside of the dump trailer and then zip these up nice and tight. And I do have a lock washer in there because this, uh, this trailer is going to see a lot of rattling, a lot of moving around. I don't want these, these bolts and these, uh, these uh, nuts to get loose and then fall off over time, which tends to happen. So anytime you're using vibrating equipment, uh, definitely make sure to get a lock washer in between the nut and the washer, which is what I have here. There were some various areas inside of the trailer that had completely rusted out, like this area that you can see here, and there used to be a bolt and a nut there that was holding this down. Obviously, I can't go in that same area because there's a, there's a, there's no more metal. It rusted out completely. So rather than patching it, which would have been the right job with welding, I'm just going to relocate the bolt and the nut over into some solid metal, and that's where I'm just going to drill a hole, pre-drill it, and then set my screw in, or my, my, my nut and my bolt there. There's the new hole right there. You can see where that rusted spot was that wasn't going to work. So I just put the new hole into some solid metal. And now I can zip up my, my new hardware. I didn't remove the old hardware there. It had more life in it. It was pretty uh, pretty strong. So I didn't want to you know remove something that wasn't broken. So I'm just putting a new one next to it so that when it does go, we still have some, some uh, strength there. So that's the, that's the end of that. Okay, and there's the final product. So as you can see, we have reinforced it with a bunch of nuts, bolts, and washers and so they don't pull through. Uh, I'm going to give it a little bit of a shake test to make sure that, you know, 
it's sturdy, it's attached to the frame, it's not going to fall off like it did before, and I think it passed that test. You know, the dump feature works, the frame is solid and sturdy, and I'm ready to move on for some tires. The old tire came off pretty easy, that wasn't too bad dealing with the cotter pin, and the new one goes on like a glove. As you can see it fits, it's spinning perfect, I was worried it would hit the bottom of the trailer, but it's not. It, it, it looks like it's got plenty of clearance and it's spinning with no issues. So what we'll do is we'll take that off and we will get ready to paint this thing before we put the tires on, this way we don't get paint on the new tires. I'm just doing a little bit of scraping here, I want to scrape some of the loose paint off, some of the rust chips. and all the dirt, things that, you know, you just don't want to paint over. It's not going to be perfect, like I said earlier in the video. I think that this spray paint's just going to flake off eventually, but we're going to do what we can today and make it look good for at least this year. I'm just doing a little bit of a compressed air blow off just to get rid of some of that dust and you can see it had a lot of loose debris and dust on that. Man, I'm happy to get that off before we paint. This was a good uh, last thought. I wasn't going to do this originally but it proved to be worth it and I might have spent a little bit too much time doing it. It's uh, one of those things, if you've ever used compressed air before, you kind of just don't want to stop. <laughs> so we'll move on to the paint. I hope that you guys found that painting as satisfying as I did. I love spray painting. I just like to see the before and after and the during the project. I think it's really satisfying. And it's just one of those things like, you know, it just cleans it up, makes everything look uniform and almost new again. So if you have something to paint, go ahead and paint it. And I guess this is a good time for me to say if you've made it this far in the video, I think we're like 18 minutes in at this point. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up and, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I, I'm kind of dabbling in, with my style of YouTube creation and videos. Uh, these voiceovers are new, so if you like it, let me know down in the comments. If you think it's crummy or it's too long, also let me know. That feedback is super helpful. So um, Anyway, back to what we're working on here. I'm fitting the tires. You already saw me put that on earlier today. We, we, we fit them. They fit right. And now I'm just setting the cotter pins. The cotter pins I got were just a little bit short, but they're still going to work. So we'll get these tires on and we'll wrap this video up. All right, guys. And there it is in all its glory. We have the, uh, the paint, the tires, the, the, the gate. Uh, we re reinforced the thing so it's nice and tight. It's not going to fall off the frame anymore. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Uh, if this was a waste of my time. Or if you would do this to an old little trailer that you guys might have. Um, give, me a, give me a comment. Give me a like. If you like this video, if you like this type of video, let me know. And I'll make more like this. So, um, Alright guys, that's it. I appreciate you coming and watching this video and coming along with this process. But just a note, I didn't paint the inside because I figured it's just going to all flake off and get all over my, my material, my wood chips. I don't really want the paint in my garden, so... Anyway, that's it guys. I'm uh I'm gonna check out here. You have a nice day. Take care.
Perfect.